So you could spend a whole entire year of your life learning about functions and all of the nuances. But in this video, I'm going to go into more depth about the things that you should understand about functions in order to make them more powerful and more flexible. And the first way that you make a function more powerful and more flexible is what are called parameters or arguments, whichever that you want to call them. And we place arguments and parameters inside of functions just like this. So let's just say we wanted to add a parameter, also known as argument, to our function. What we would do is we would place it within the actual parentheses right here. No secret there. And as you also notice, our word is matching. And if you are kind of seeing the pattern here, here's what's happening. Essentially, whenever you execute a function, so let's just say I were to execute the log function and I inputted, let's just say, hello right here. What is going to happen is that it is going to take this actual hello string just like this and I'll type it out for you. It's going to take it, it's going to go into this part right here, and then it's actually going to replace the word with the actual hello, just like this. So anything that you actually pass into the function will be passed down, and it's almost like as if dittos. If you don't know what a ditto is, ditto is a particular Pokemon that can turn into anything. It is a very special Pokemon that can turn into anything. And essentially what's happening is that that parameter is turning into ditto. It is turning into whatever you pass into it. And it's almost as if you have a Pokemon that can change shape. You can put anything that you want to into a function parameter. You can put a string, you can put an object, but essentially what's going to happen is that it's going to turn into whatever you put into it. So if you put in uh, your name and let's just say we do Teddy, what's going to happen is that this ditto is going to turn into Teddy and this other ditto right here is going to turn into Teddy as well. And it's pretty much as if you've created a part of your program or those words will morph into whatever that you pass into it. Sometimes people call it passing a parameter. Sometimes people call it passing an argument. And essentially what's happening is that word is going to turn into where whatever you passed into it when you actually executed the function. So if I executed the function and it and I passed in Teddy just like this, what is essentially going to happen is it's going to be almost like a ditto Pokemon. It's going to turn into whatever you passed into it, and it's going to execute that particular string, array, whatever you want to call it. So if that doesn't make sense, let's go into VS Code. Let's do a couple of examples, and I guarantee you, you will get it. Okay, so we are now in Visual Studio Code, and let's just make another function. We're just going to make another log function, and this is going to be the old dummy function, old function that couldn't barely just, it only logs a hello. It's not really that cool. It's not really that flexible. It's not that important. And we're just going to go ahead and we are going to log it into the actual browser here. So. As you can see, we've executed it. We've got our parentheses. It is now executing within the console. But I let's just say like I'm getting tired of the hello thing. The hello thing is super basic. I want to make it so that it logs whatever I pass into it. And let's just say we're, we'll call this word and we'll put word right here. Now remember, you don't pass in the actual value right here. That is not going to be valid. JavaScript is not going to let you do that. If you try to do this, this is no, no, that's not what you want. You want the object, you want the representation. You don't want the actual string and the representation is going to be the word and this is what's going to turn into it. So if I pass into here, down here in the actual function, if I pass in the string, this is what you want. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to go up here. It's going to be Teddy up here and it's going to be Teddy right here. And it's essentially exactly this, but it's doing it within a representation and you have your dittos there so that you can pass anything that you want to in there. And that is the whole entire part of it. So pretty simple to understand. The next thing that we're going to talk about is another incredibly important uh, functionality of functions. And that is going to be 
the return. The return is actually a very, very important part. Up until now, all that we've had is these console logs. And really, you're not going to see console logs that much. Console logs are more important for learning. But as you can see, there is no return here. And you may have seen the return statement in many other parts. And technically, we are returning a console log. But what's happening when this function actually executes is that this function doesn't really even turn into anything. Watch this. So if I go to here and I type in var log value here and I try to actually log the value of the console log. So if I go up to here and I console log log value, this is not this function is not actually returning anything. So if I go up I can't actually do this because a func of console log doesn't really return anything and it doesn't really return anything right here. So, so if I go to the actual console log and I return it, what is it going to actually return is the function because it's not actually returning a value. So what we want to do is we want to actually return a value. And the way that we do that is we have a return statement. So let's just say for some crazy instance, I want to return the word turtle. I want to actually return a string from the value. And this is incredibly important. So please don't skip this part right here. So once this function actually executes, it's pretty much blown away. It's not going to be there anymore. And what's going to return is going to be an actual string. So if I go here and I actually uh, look into memory or so if I go down here and I actually look at this function, what's going to happen is that it's going to actually return a value. And if you didn't catch that, this is actually the string from the function. So if I execute this function, it's going to actually return a string of turtle. And what's going to be replaced is the word turtle right here instead of a function or instead of an undefined. Let's just say we had a console log in here. So if I had a console log just like this and I go console log and I console log the turtle to the actual terminal, what's going to happen is that this is either going to return a function. So you will see the same thing before. It's not going to actually return a turtle. It, what it's going to actually return is either a function or it's going to return undefined, which is not actually what we want. Whenever we're actually making functions, we actually want to return a value, a string, an array most of the time. And if you don't have the actual return here, let's just say, you know, you, you just have a turtle string in here, it's not going to actually return anything. And most of the time when you actually run a function, you want to actually return a string. So hopefully if that did, if that made sense to you, but if it doesn't, let's go ahead, let's do a couple practice rounds and it will make more sense. Okay, so up here we have our log and if we try to log our value right here, what's going to happen is that it's not going to, it's going to return a function, which is not what we want. We don't want it to return a function. So let's just say we want, instead of to log, we're going to have, we want this to actually return a turtle string. So we're gonna go down here. We're going to change our function and we are going to pass in turtle string and we're going to pass in the word. And we also want, let's just say var value is equal to word. So we will place our word right here and as you can see, it's not going to actually log anything because nothing is defined. But once I actually add a return, just like this, you will notice what's going to actually happen. I need to log the actual value right here. What you will notice is that it actually returns a string. A real string is being returned. So that log value actually has a string value in it as opposed to when we just had a console log where it's logging it to the console and it's not actually returning anything. That is a very important thing to understand about functions is that most of the time they need to return something. But let's just not stop there. Let's do a little bit more complex of an actual function. So we're going to say here and let's just say we want to do the log again. We want to log something and we're going to have words and we want to have a scream option. We want the ability to for our log to turn into a scream. So 
what we're going to do is first thing is that we need to have some type of conditional here to check if it's an actual screen and we need to check is a uh, screen. So we need to check screen and we'll say is screen. I think that's a little bit more explicit. Whenever you have a uh, is right there, that means you want to actually pass in a true or you want to pass in a Boolean. So we're going to go into here and we're going to say true right here. Then we're going to go down. And what we're going to do is we're going to return uppercase. So if this words is actual is scream, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uppercase just like this. And that will actually uppercase it else. We'll say else if uh, is loud or scream is equal to false. So we'll say false just like this. We'll, we will return actual words and then we will make this to lowercase just like this. And what's going to happen is that it's going to check and if it is the thing that we actually want, it is going to log it. So we'll say is scream just like this. So we'll say is scream then we will have an else and we'll have a just base case down here just in case we don't catch anything and then we will log out our words just like this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have our log here and we will have uh, hello just like this and true for the screen. So if we want to actually scream in our log, why we would do that, I don't know. But if we want to, we would have a true right here. And what's going to happen is it's going to catch it and it's going to return it. But as you notice, we don't have anything actually being returned because we're not actually console logging it. This is another important thing. If you want to be able to see the actual values a lot of the time, you're going to have to either console log them or you're going to have to debug them and I'll talk about debugging here in a second but for this video because it's for beginners we're just going to console log it and what's going to happen is that we're going to have a console log that's going to wrap around it and as you can see it caught it and the is scream is equal to true it returned an uppercase so essentially what's happening is this and just to kind of reiterate it just one more time we'll have a value right here we'll have log and we'll have um hello we'll have true because we want to scream. So what's going to happen is that it's going to store the string within this value right here. Then what we can do is we can go down here, we can console log and the value will be right here. And it's in there because we st we returned a string and that string is being stored within the value and we can actually console log the value. Hopefully that made a lot of sense to you because it's really important to understand returns and understand that whenever you want to use a function in the real world, most of the time you're not going to be using console logs. You're going to be returning strings. You're going to be returning numbers. You're going to be returning arrays. And that's very important to understand when you're developing in your day-to-day -day life. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.